Hey everyone, uh, my name is Namisha. Um, I'm a product manager at Microsoft and uh, I used to be a data scientist and I successfully made the transition to being a product manager. So this is a presentation on uh, my journey of self-assessment, which I've also shared with several people and it's really helped them. So um, hopefully this journey of mine where I spent three to four years being a data scientist um, across you know, various teams in Microsoft, also spent some time in a fintech company, American Express, um, and then moving to product management has value for you as well. So without quickly, um, you know, deep diving into uh, my details, which I'll probably share with the with product school later on, and you can also get access to. Um, let's go into what the agenda of the talk is, right? So we're going to spend a minute or two on understanding who this talk is for. So if the, this talk is not for you, um, feel free to pass it on to someone um, for whom it makes sense. Um, second, we're going to talk about, um, you know, what the traits of a product manager are. And this is important to know because um, you will need to understand whether you have these traits. Um, and finally, we go to the self-assessment plan, which, uh, as I mentioned, I used and a bunch of people have used and it's really brought them a lot of um, value. So, yeah, let's get into it. So, yeah, who should be listening to this talk? Um, essentially, there are folks in three buckets, I'd call it. Uh, who would get value out of this talk. So the first kind is um, if you're someone who's pre-interview, you know, you're not in a PM role yet, you are thinking about making the move, you're probably um, yet to receive an interview call, you're uh, kind of fidgety. So this talk will give you clarity about whether you like the idea of product management or whether you really want to be a product manager. Um, the second kind of folks, I think, set of folks who will uh, gain value out of listening to this are the folks who are interviewing for a product manager role right now, because this self-assessment plan will help you improve your skills. And finally, also PMs um, who are early in their career. So you've just landed a new product manager role. You want to understand what your strengths and weaknesses are and understand what your blind spots are because you don't have as much experience. Um, this talk will really um, hit the nail on all of these things. So um, if you're not any one of these people, feel free to um, stop listening and, you know, send it to someone who uh, will get value out of this. So going to the second part of the talk, um, let's talk about what the traits of a product manager are. Again, uh, product manager and not program because um, they're quite different as roles. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about this here. But Product School actually has a lot of good resources on what the differences are between product, program, you know, project, all the uh, different PM uh, roles that are out there. And it's good to know uh, before you ju uh, jump into trying to become one. So uh, there are a lot of definitions around what a product manager does. And if you probably see the job descriptions of various roles out in the market, um, you'll have slightly varying descriptions. But at the end of the day, a product manager is somebody who solves a user problem by any means necessary, okay, within reason, uh, to bring the company closer to achieving its goals while staying true to mission. I know that this is throwing a lot of words, so let's take an example and understand it quickly. Um, so let's say the company we're talking about is Uber and you want to be a product manager here. Uh, the goal of the company is, you know, among other things, to make money. And uh, the company's mission is, uh, this is actually taken from their website. So they're a company uh, that connects physical and digital worlds to help make movement happen at the tap of a button. So if you're a product manager at Uber and your goal is to make money, you will identify user problem, you know, something like, okay, going in cabs with unknown drivers has safety issues, right? Uh, you will solve this problem by any means necessary. So let's say as a product manager, you ideate and envision that you would be creating an emergency alerting system, um, you know, on the Uber app, which can be activated with voice. Um, again, it could be any different solution, but this is just one of the solutions, right? Um, finally, by implementing this feature, you reach your goal, right? Users trust Uber a lot more now. Um, they're going to pick you over the competitors. They're going to spend more money on the app because they're going to book more rides on the app. So basically, this is the job 
uh, at, the, at the end of the day that a product manager has to do. And this any means necessary bucket is how they do it. So uh, that is what we need to kind of go into. And at this point, if you haven't been clear about this is what a product manager does, I think you definitely need to rework on uh, what this role means to you, right? So now that we're clear about what a product manager does, uh, or are at least expected to do, um, here's the self-assessment plan that you kind of need to think about doing if you are either thinking about making the jump, if you you know are having second thoughts about that, if you are already a PM and you want to become an even better PM, right? So let's go to step one. Most of these assessment plans, which are catered to yourself, start with reflection, right? You need to kind of start with seeing where you are. So do you find yourself exhibiting the traits of a product manager, right? So let's look at what these traits are and we'll see how much you probably um, are exhibiting these traits and figure out what to do next. So um, I usually like to explain with examples because um, it's easy to envision yourself doing this rather than a, as a theoretical concept. So let's take an example. Let's say you're a software development engineer or a data scientist at DoorDash, right? This was something very similar to what I was doing at Microsoft um, within the advertising organization. I was a data scientist and I was going through all of these steps. So, okay, so you're working at DoorDash, you're a data scientist or a software engineer, and you're thinking about moving to a product manager role, all right? So step one, um, let's reflect on whether you have user empathy. So if you were an SD at DoorDash, would you think about who the users are, right? You're coding up a particular feature, you're uh, building some distributed system within the app, whatever it is, right? Are you thinking about who is actually using this app? Are you thinking about the restaurants who are signing up on the app? Are you thinking about uh, the dashers who are picking up the orders? Uh, do you worry that the feature that you're building is actually, actually not going to be used by these people at all? So this is, the basic um, you know, level of being a product manager, manager and whether you have this trait really um, matters a lot. Because if you're not able to think about anybody other than you know, your team and what you're building, and you're not able to kind of think like the user, you can't be solving user problems. So are you somebody who has this trait, which is user empathy? Second thing is, um, are you someone who wants to know the bigger picture? So you could be working on, say, just you know, one button on, on the app. You could be working on, say, the order button, right? Um, are you somebody who thinks outside of this? Are you trying to understand um, how many users are there overall on DoorDash? Um, what countries uh, is this app famous in? What cities is it doing well in? What restaurants or what cuisines are popular on the app? Um, why is um, why are Indian restaurants not signing up for DoorDash? You know stuff like this. So are you kind of thinking big picture? Because usually product managers um, design uh, or at least come up with like product roadmaps and stuff. So you can't be thinking about just one small thing. Uh, you should be interested in the bigger picture. You need to think at an org level, at a company level, at a market level, what are other um, apps like Uber Eats, for example, doing in the space that you are working in? So are you someone who wants to know the big picture all the time? You always want to zoom out and see what makes sense and where and why. The third thing is, uh, do you usually find yourself playing detective? So as I said, let's say you're working on you know, the order button, for example. Um, and something is off in, say, you know, the data that uh, some other team is providing you. You notice that, you know, after 9 p.m. in Seattle, the number of orders uh, through the DoorDash app have dropped significantly. Now, this is not something you're working on, but are you inquisitive about these things? And do you end up going and talking to this team? Maybe you want to talk to the product managers who handle this data. Um, are you interested in finding out why? This is happening, even though it's not directly uh, impacting your work, because this um, being nosy um, is something which product managers 
should really be good at because they need to kind of dig out things that are going wrong um, and anticipate things so that they can go and fix it before things get really bad. Um, and at the same time, if they, you know, if you have an intuition or a sense that you can uh, make something better, uh, you kind of have to play detective and go dig by yourself because uh, product managers are the folks who are deciding what kind of comes next, in a, of course, in association with uh, everyone else in the company. So it's really important to play detective. It's really important to just really be on something before you, uh, you know, come to a conclusion. Which leads me to my next very important trait, which you should ideally be uh, showcasing. It is uh, trying to get clarity about something, even if it's just for yourself. So you know how in the previous trait I said you figured out that um, there was some data where you saw that DoorDash orders were you know dropping after 9 p.m. in Seattle. Um, are you trying everything in your faculty to um, understand why, right? You're kind of just digging through, making making charts, talking to everyone who's responsible for that data. Is it being logged correctly? Um, are the dashers not picking the order up? You know, stuff like that. So you just, you kind of go and figure out, okay, you reach a point where you're able to understand that situation clearly, right? So let's say you reach a stage where you realize that <clears throat> dashers are actually not signing up after 9 p.m in downtown Seattle, like people don't want to do late night deliveries. And this is a problem, right? So you've reached this stage, you've reached this type of clarity in your mind. So at this point, um, usually someone who would be a good product manager or who wants to do product management would organically want to fix this, right? They realize that there is huge potential here, right? That this 10% drop in orders can actually be beneficial to uh, the app and to making money and to having good engagement on the app. So, you know, you're somebody who actually puts a team together. You maybe participate in your company's hackathon, uh, maybe you do a side project, you know, all of that stuff. And let's say you come up with a solution and you even test it out. Let's say you release something like after 9 p.m. in certain cities, for example, in Seattle, um, every, um, you know, third order made by a dasher has um, a higher tip, right? You're incentivizing the dashers to maybe pick up more, um, pick up more uh, after 9 p.m., which is a way for them to uh, basically not drop orders. So this is a solution. You don't know if it's gonna work, but you could try and test it out. So you have um, put together this team, you are enrolling people onto your idea, you have a level of influence over other people because you're able to clearly communicate, you know, things like that. So at the end of the day, if you are exhibiting any of these five traits or all of them or some of them, um, you're either interested in being a product manager or you know that moving to this role would be good for you because these are your strengths. And um, it's this is, of course, just scratching the surface. Um, and also along with this, you should be interested in talking to people that goes without saying. You should be interested in, um, you know, being very comfortable in an environment where nothing is known to you. Um, you're okay with paving your own path. So if you notice these traits in yourself, in your current role in any company, um, I think it's it's a good thing to think about moving to a PM role. And if you're already doing this as a PM, um, keep doing more of it because this is what is expected of you, right? So finally, uh, once you reflect, right, and you complete um, understanding that, okay, this is what is right for me, um, you can move on to the next step. And if you understand, okay, you know what? I did not know that being a PM is actually doing all of this. I just thought it was not coding or it was organizing meetings. Uh, you know, these are some of the misconceptions which are there for people. So um if that's the case then yeah you know explore other roles which which make more um, meaning to you which give more meaning to you so now that you've reflected um the final thing is to actually uh, test the waters um so it's not enough to just have traits but you also really need to develop skills right you need to um 
get all of the PM skills in order to be good at, at your role, you need to understand whether you have a have the capacity to even develop these skills. It's not enough if you just like uh, playing detective. Um, you know, can you become better at it? Can you become better at enrolling people into a team? You know, all of that. So the best way is to test the waters, right? So basically, um, you need to be a PM for a product, okay? So either do a project with your friends, do a hackathon at work, um, do a side project at work, whatever it is, okay? Solve a user problem. Um, and as always, uh, let's walk through the steps in doing that, and then we'll go into how exactly you can assess yourself, right? So uh, I'm not going to go very deep into doing this. I'm just going to explain with an example, uh, as always. So uh, let's say that you are someone working at Instacart, okay, and you want to test the waters and be a product manager. So step one, identify a few problems that you as a user or people around you as users face. Okay, um, let's say, for example, you realize that if you want to make complicated recipes on the app, it's really hard to get individual ingredients. Okay, among other problems, of course. Second step, put together a team. Okay, get um, some people who are working around you, maybe in your company, your friends, whoever it is, to um, give their opinions on this. Okay. Um, because they might have other ideas, maybe you're being biased, you need to rule out all of these things. So discuss and pick one problem to solve. In also doing this, you are understanding the market, you're understanding your competition, uh, you're picking the problem which makes more sense for Instacart to solve right now. Okay, so let's say you want to solve that problem of, um, you know, users who come to the app, find it very hard to prepare complicated recipes because it's really hard to, you know, enter 25 ingredients from some other website into the app, right? So now ideate on actually solving this problem, right? Talk to it, uh, talk about it to a bunch of users, figure out what their journey is like when they open the app till they order something or even after that, right? Understand how your competitors work, do all of that research, okay? Actually ideate on this. Finally, let's say you have a working feature, uh, sorry, uh, a working uh, MVP, um, you're gonna actually go and tell your team, hey, you know, let's go build this. Um, this is how the UX will look, these are the designs, this is what the backend needs to do. So in doing this, you're forcing yourself to create requirements and understand the end-to-end -end flow for this feature that you have ideated along with your uh, teammates. And, you know, in this process, you're also aligning people. There will be conflict. You will be resolving that. You'll be the glue that holds this team together. And ultimately, you build a feature, right? So once your feature is built, um, test it out. Show it to a bunch of um, people outside your company, maybe. Or if you can't do that, then do a local uh, test within your company. Um, figure out what the reception is. You will get feedback. It will be good. It will be bad incorporate that constructive feedback and iterate on your feature. Do this over and over again, right? So one iteration of this going from identifying your user problem, going all the way till release of that is one product or feature cycle. So do that a bunch of times, okay? And that is what will give you the information for you to do your self-assessment. So naturally in doing all of this, you have um, acted as a product manager. You've done a subset of things which a product manager would do um, in most companies, but you haven't done everything, but that's okay. You probably have not done, you know, go to market. You haven't uh, created KPIs. You haven't really communicated this to maybe your leadership. That's, that's fine. But you've done the, some of the major things that a product manager is expected to do in a company. Okay. And you have solved a problem which you identified you know, solution that you and your team came up with. Um, it's it's a very good experience and it's a very good exercise to do. Okay, so now this is the most important part of this talk. It is doing the self assessment. You know what a PM does. You more, you know what the traits that you need to exhibit are, and after testing it out, um, now you need to know whether these traits can be converted into skills. Okay. So let's look at the skills which 
um, I think, and also a couple of my uh, managers, et cetera, have told me that are very important for being a PM and whether it really makes sense for you to go down this path or not, right? So first one is clear communication. Can you communicate your ideas to somebody, okay? Second is user empathy. We already discussed this. If you don't think like a user, and if you don't care about the user, you cannot be solving problems for them, okay? Third thing is you should be comfortable with ambiguity. Think about it. You are solving problems which nobody knows about yet. You are finding solutions for something which nobody has worked on, okay? So you need to be comfortable paving a path for yourself and constantly being in situations where you don't have the answers. Fourth, you should be comfortable playing detective. What does this mean? Good data analysis skills, good um, you know, uh, visualization skills, um, an intuition or a sense of where all this information is finally leading you to. If you're not okay with trying to come to a cohesive solution with you know, a large amount of data, it's, it's gonna be really hard being a PM. Next point is enrolling people onto an idea. Your entire job is to get a whole bunch of people who are not going to be working together at all to work on something. They will have different priorities. They will have different things to do. They will not be interested in working on your problem. It's, it's all, uh, you know, a day-to-day -day thing. But you need to get all of these people aligned and working on something. So if that seems exhausting to you, you shouldn't be thinking about becoming a PM. Okay? And finally, um, driving clarity, right? So once you get all of these people together, there's going to be noise, there's going to be chaos, your, you know, project trajectory is going to go off the charts sometimes. You need to always keep drilling down sense into people and keep asking the right questions to get people kind of, you know, going on the same, the track that needs to be taken. So if you're not interested in doing that, you shouldn't be thinking about, about being a product manager. Um, so you not only need to know whether you're rating yourself well, you know, out of say five or 10 points on each of this, you also need to know whether you have an interest in doing each of these things. So, which is kind of what I have shown. Um, and if you have ratings where you're interested in something, right? But um, but you have but you don't have uh, a good self rating like you don't have that skill. It means that you have room for improvement, so you don't mind kind of grinding and becoming better at something. But you might also see that you know you're good at uh, thinking about users. You have good communication. You like driving clarity, but you couldn't be bothered about you know playing detective or enrolling people into an idea. That's okay. That just means that, you know, maybe you really like being, say, a researcher. You're interested in being an engineer, maybe a UX engineer. Um, you could be interested in marketing, right? A product management may not be for you because, um, you know, being comfortable with amb ambiguity and all of that, that just is not your cup of tea and that's okay. So there could be different combinations that you are good at, that you're interested in. So the more number of times you do this exercise, the more patterns you see within yourself and you figure out whether this PM role is good for you or whether there are other roles that are good for you. And if you're already a product manager, you know, doing this is of course, you're already doing this as part of your job. You're just probably not dating yourself or understanding whether you're interested in something. So the more um, you reflect, the more you assess yourself, um, you get a better idea about what you need to improve upon. And if you're someone who's interviewing, you probably know um, if you're doing well in certain parts of the interview, you know why. Maybe because you're not interested in, you know, thinking about certain kinds of questions. Maybe you're not interested in um, doing analysis type questions or estimation questions. And uh, if that's if that's a deal breaker, maybe you should rethink. Or if you're interested, but if you're not doing well, Maybe you can, um, you know, drill down and get better at just such kind of uh, questions in the future. So there's a lot of value, I think, if uh, you already exhibit these traits uh, naturally, because then you don't have to really force yourself to work on it. 
I think um, some of those traits are user empathy, being comfortable and calm in ambiguous situations, and uh, being open to uh, enrolling people and bringing people together. So these are things which are hard to learn. Uh, they are traits which eventually get developed into skills. Imagine trying to force yourself to think about a user, right? It, if you don't like the idea of it, it's very difficult to do that. So the, the job, you know, the product manager job is um, complicated. Um, as I said, all of these things are not things that you learn in school. For example, no one says, hey, you know, this is the track that you need to take. Of course, um, there are a lot of different um, sources out there and product school has a really good um, you know, set of courses to understand uh, your blind spots and actually take courses for each of these skills and develop them, which is a great idea to do. But uh, if you don't have that opportunity, then the self-assessment would be really, really helpful. Um, yeah, and you know, at the end of the day, um, it really gives you more clarity on whether you're being a good product manager, whether you should be a product manager at all. Um, and uh, I'm going to link this self-assessment plan in the in the description for this talk and also in this presentation. So feel free to download it. Feel free to uh, rate yourself. Um, see how the trends are looking. You know, for the next three four months. See whether you are improving in certain areas. Whether you just you're not able to like certain things. Um, and uh, at the end of that, those three four months, you will understand uh, you know how to get better and whether this path really makes sense for you. And this is exactly what I did for um, the last year of being an ML engineer or data scientist at Microsoft. I rated myself um, constantly after taking on a lot of side projects at work. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, doing, I think, a good job right now. And I really like being a product manager. So if you are having double, you know, second thoughts on this whole process, feel free to uh, reach out to me. Um, yeah, all the very best. You got this. Um, and thank you so much to Product School for giving me this time. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for listening to this talk.